Everyone, welcome to FT Insights. I'm Mike Fibus. You know, I've spoken a lot lately about what I call the wearables fatigue. Folks are looking for more from their wearables than just step counts and heart rate. What they'd like is some uh, good old fashioned assessment and some advice. Now, we're fortunate today to have Aki Polkinen with us. He's from First Feet. For the last 15 years, First Feet has been laser focused on bringing that advice to wellness professionals, professional athletes, and their trainers. For the last five years, Aki has been bringing those insights to the rest of us through uh, wearables. So Aki, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. So I know uh, VO2 Max has been a real focus for you this year, and it's not hard to see why. I mean, it's a key variable for understanding fitness levels. Um, it's a very difficult one to derive, and uh, so this is a real breakthrough, yes? Yeah, this is a real breakthrough. I mean, like, um, uh, of course, like the uh, VO2 max has been known for like decades in the next physiology and all the benefits related to it. I mean, like, uh, and what it stands for has been known for a long time. I mean, but the difficulty has been like because it um, has been sole property of like excess labs and like uh, you need to undergo a heavy testing to get the number in order to like to know how fit you are and then like, like how that impacts your health. So I mean, like this, I mean, really bringing this to the masses has been like a huge step for first bit. And I mean, like, uh, uh, I really appreciate all that. All our partners also like, uh, well, joining us with in this, in this, like bringing this number for the consumers because like, uh, you know, VO2 max doesn't really sound something that like, <laughs> you, you know, consumer appealing sound, it doesn't have it, but like, uh, let's face it, it's a very uh, important number and, and, and it really, uh, like like it's important for if, if you're like uh, training for something and uh, it's important if you like to just want to like stay healthy and so you can see like are you really staying healthy and uh, yeah as you mentioned so it's a difficult number number to derive and uh, so we've been done we have been doing a lot of work in order to get it assessed in all conditions without as little effort as possible, but really you need to do something to get the number, some exercise, walking or running. Uh, but like, uh, you know, there's many factors that will influence how accurately it will be derived. And uh, that's something we've, we've been working for a long time. And you're able to accurately reproduce that from PPG signals, whether they're on a fitness band or a hearable in your ear? Yes, so of course we are always uh, like uh, slaves for the uh, heart rate accuracy. But uh, the products that we work with, so uh, we uh, will uh, do thorough des testing for the data in order to get it assessed, like so that we know that the original data is accurate enough to derive the number. But yes, so first the number was available only for the, uh, uh, the, the uh, ECG heart rate belts that you wear around the chest. And uh, but we made huge advances there, and then now it's available also with the uh, PPG devices wherever that's measured. But of course, you need some uh, also the ex external power, like like the walking speed, running speed, or, or cycling uh, power. And so the way you do it now is you need some measure for at rest, some walking, and some you know exerting, right? Yeah, we some exert, exerting, so we don't need the rest part. But like, I mean, like, uh, if you walk or run briskly for like like five to ten minutes, you get, you will get your number. Okay, cool. Now, I know First Speed is is expert in then deriving advice, assessment, and advice from that. Is uh, how much of that is being translated to your consumer customers or, or are they doing taking that and running with it on their own yeah i mean like um of course like like um we, that be a two max is a number that could like many of could take uh, benefits from like like deriving advice based on that because like uh, if you want to provide an advice that is like personal 
and write for your fitness level, so you not know, have to know the fitness level. <laughs> but yeah, so for example, Jabra devices, the ear, earphones, they are like uh, providing an exercise guidance based on the numbers. Huawei products are providing exercise guidance based on the numbers. But I think uh, what we are really still lacking is a product that would be really, I mean, of course, Huawei and Chapra products are for masses, but like uh, they offer like uh, more, more of a like, a like training program, but I still lack for a really easy to approach product that would like give you a uh, uh, even more straightforward advice, how to keep fit and how to get fitter. Right. <laughs> Do you think we'll see more of that in the coming year? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, if it's up, up to us, so I'd like, uh, then we will definitely see it. And like, uh, that's something that we are working on or have been like, working a lot during the past year or, or so already. But, you know, it takes time, like, like for the consumer market to think to get, get really into the public. Right. Right. So, yeah, I, I think, um, yeah, the next year should really be kind of a watershed for starting to offer advice and being really useful for the masses, as you say. Yeah, I think like, uh, uh, although, you know, what we all have seen that the, uh, like, uh, the mass market wearables like this, uh, most cheapest devices, only calculating steps, and things like that, we all, all see the decline there. But now it starts to come up to the real benefit for the user. And like for us, it's been also like fruitful to work with companies that really want to deliver a experience that's like helpful for the user. So it's it's a it starts to be more like a serious game now now on. So yeah. Yeah, it's it's exciting. So and yeah. I mean a lot of what uh you know, the secret sauce of what first beat does is embedded in the heart rate variability with, you know, minute differences between yes. the timings in, in each beat. And, uh, and, you know, I've gotten to do the wellness assessment, so I can see how much more is possible with sleep right. and stress. Yeah. When do you see those kind of metrics moving down, uh, you know, into consumer wearables? Yeah, I think like uh, what we are currently seeing that, that like uh, I think uh, Sony Smartman 2 was the first device to deliver the stress and recovery metrics for the consumers. And now Garmin has uh, produced a de device. I mean, like, where do I have? Ah, actually, my wife, my wife is wearing actually now, it now, but like uh, Eco Smart 3, I guess that's one. So uh, delivers the stress and recovery. And uh, uh, but I think uh, still. Uh, Probably it will, will take some iteration for, for comp corporations and companies to uh, really uh, to deliver that benefit. But uh, yeah, you, you've done undergoing the lifestyle assessment, so you really know that there's a lot of things and lo lots, lots of information there where to deliver a, a experience from. But uh, definitely, uh, like uh, we will see like things coming surfacing like like during the next year, perhaps like like even earlier things around that for the stress and recovery and the, the delivering uh, lifestyle uh, bug guidance for consumer wearables so uh, that's a huge space there i mean from which uh, numerous of different different user experiences could be delivered and i'm really excited to see what what will come up during the next couple of years in that field because like uh, i mean like many many opportunities there yeah yeah, definitely. Now, you know, your professional products are based on ECG, two lead yes. ECG. And, you know, that's clearly an advantage in accuracy over, you know, PPG on, say, a wrist, which is such a hostile environment. Uh, do, you see in, do you see advances uh, in delivering PPG accuracy? And how important is that for you at this point? Yeah, I mean, like uh, what we've seen, like uh, during the years, so uh, as mentioned, so we did a lot of research, like to get things work, working on on PPG, and uh, I think now there starts to be like uh, components and sensors that are specific for the PPG and measuring the heart rate and heart rate variability. Uh, I think like uh, the 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 best sensors currently they are already 
really good, I would say. And the, the pack has come like more, a lot more tighter. So there's like less of those who are really bad. <laughs> and then it's, I mean, and uh, <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I think, of course, there's certain like uh, physiological and behavioral uh, limit about like how accurate it can be. I mean, due to the nature of the signal and, and like, because if the hand is moving, then like uh, you don't like get to get the B2B data that much. But uh, definitely, like, uh, there, there's a certain limit already achieved. So, uh, but I think uh, one of the things uh, where, like, industry would benefit a lot, and probably what I've, like, uh, learned in, in the shows and conferences that I've, I've been in, is the uh, extending the battery life to increase the uh, data, data uh, coverage and length of the length of the sampling that the uh, devices can go without, uh, before the before charging, so I think I think it's like uh, getting forward, like like uh, a bit by bit. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. So sounds like we've reached a threshold then, and now it's uh, at least you know for minimum level of accuracy, and now it's uh, it's all about tuning the platform to get more out of it. Yeah, I would say so. So I mean, like uh, we've seen many many of the PPC devices well accurate. For our, for our purposes to uh, deliver like like heart rate variability derived products. Okay, cool. Aki, what can't you believe I didn't ask you? What did I forget to ask? Uh, I guess probably something, for example, like what would be a, a, uh, a dream product, <laughs> dream product wearable. <laughs> So uh, answer me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, um, <clears throat> it would be really something that would, uh, like, uh, I have maybe a couple of examples. The first one was the thing that I mentioned earlier, really easy to approach product that would, like, uh, help me to keep fit. As simple as that. I mean, like, like every morning, every day, it would, it would tell me what to do based on my, like, uh, lifestyle, based on my how do I sleep, what's my stress level of the day, what's my fitness level and everything. So it would tell me and guide me through the day and then like through the week how to get, get, get me fit. Because we know that like all this, we have all our busy schedules and like uh, some days we just feel down due to something that we ate or like, like how we slept and things like that. And uh, so uh, like where about that really would be like uh, on my skin, so to say, uh, that how do I feel and I would recommend me best way to keep fit. That would be a one, one kind of a dream product just to like uh, put icing on the cake on top of the like, like just knowing the VH2 max. Yeah, no, that's a good dream. Let's hope your dream comes true. <laughs> yeah. Uh, someday. Yes. In the meantime, Aki, thanks so much for joining us. I really appreciate your time and your insight. Thank you, Maki. That was uh, Aki Polkinen from First Beat uh, joining us to talk about uh, wearables and what's possible. Until next time, bye-bye.